They said they would have sent it by email. But look at the email is not regulated. So I'm sure if I took that into a Dun and Bradstreet court, that wouldn't work. So again, I take it right out to the court of public opinion. I have 620,000 households listening to me in Manhattan. Unless, of course, there's back doors being created because I have proof that the public access studio itself put up a do not reply folder so I couldn't get a show in in a timely way. Now, they're sort of backpedaling on that, but still going out through live stream, I see that I can't get any sound for, for weeks on end. So I know that, that there's a lot of tinkering going on, and if my right to publicity is blocked, that's really serious. So I'm going to yell and bitch and complain as loud as I can to whoever will listen and to whoever cares if we're a free people. And the world should know, too, because I bet you, I'm sure tons and tons of financial instruments are being securitized all over the world under the illusion that we're a free people and that... Um, and that this isn't happening. Electricity is not being delivered at 26 Gramercy Park on the seventh floor. And the Public Utilities Commission can't even send me by mail my complaint. So the question is, who owns the telephone company? Who owns the telephone company? That's what I'm saying. Who is going to call me back with their name, their full name, and their address, someplace where I can serve legal papers, or at least shame them in the eyes of the community because they're standing up. They're dupes. I need to find the principles. That's the meaning of notice to agent is notice to principal, and notice to principal is notice to agent. If I'm saying to the principal, AT&T, you are doing things that are wrong, that are unconstitutional, that violate the Bill of Rights, because you can't produce a contract. So now you're trying to get people onto the Internet where it's not regulated, and now people are going to be all fearful. Oh, regulate the Internet, regulate the Internet. Hell no, you don't need to regulate it. You just need people living flesh and blood, human beings who are living in certain locations to stand up and say, this isn't right. It can be done right now today, and you're actually helping me to do it because we're creating a record. Well, I can, I can provide you with an address where you can send any type of written complaint as well. Okay. Um, you label it, out, label it out to AT&T Executive Office okay. dash Attention Network. Okay. And that's at 1010 Pine, Pine like the tree. Okay. And that's room 6, E as in Edward, 22. Okay. And that's in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Six three one zero one. Okay, great. So you can definitely send any type of written complaint to that address as well. Okay, and now uh, what's the human being I can send it to? That is where we give our information. You can send any complaint to that address. I know. I've been through all of this. Endless agencies. I mean, eventually, I've got I got names in my Supreme Court case. I think I've got Rennell Randolph at the Securities and Exchange Commission. I got a nice human signature. But again, he's a lawyer, so he's going to be protected by the bar if you go through the Dun and Bradstreet registered courts. But so long as we have our right to publicity, people can start to see through that and understand how we can end this endless war. First it's Iraq and Iran, and, you know, it's going to be China next. That's how bad it is. It's a big problem. You can't, you, nobody can call me back from AT&T, no human being that takes accountability. And they can give me agencies and they can give me room numbers with all kinds of codes. Probably this is, a, there's a, a, a type of complaint for 6E22. I'm sure that that's not a physical location. This is more a designation of the type of complaint. Well, because, that's actually a physical location. Well, is there a room 6E22? In that building there is, correct. Well, can, can, you, can you post it on the Internet? Can um, we actually can see the place? You can on maps, and it does come up on maps. You can go into the room, into, into room 6E22. I'm not, I'm not talking about 1010 Pine Street. I mean, I'm not in from St. Louis, Missouri, so I physically cannot. 
No, I but know. But I do know. I know, know but, but, you know, we do have the technology. I mean, that's how YouTube became what it is, because, you know, teenagers were dancing around in their bedrooms, and people love to see real people. And so the technology is there that the real executives could step forward and that's why the super top executives are getting these huge salaries, because it's uh, it, because they're doing criminal actions, and that's it's the price of doing business. You can't get somebody to take that kind of accountability. I haven't even begun to research AT and T. I'm I've been putting my attention on the East Coast, and I'm just out here now while my mother's in a nursing home. And believe me, I found a lot of abuses in uh, in the insurance health care also. That's just an aside. Right. Well, I, I, I mean, the best I can do is give you that address. You can send any written formal complaint to that location, um, and you will. I, I will do that. Okay. You, you can be assured, and I'll probably put this on my proof of service, too, because uh, I've got stuff running with the, the FCC because the Securities and Exchange Commission is not really stepping up to the plate with their responsibility. And I do have a lot of local names in the city of New York, but I want to go much higher than New York. Uh, this, this corporate, the corporate, the corporation that has to be pierced is the one in the District of Columbia. Okay. Which, which, you know, a lot of people are realizing through certified annual financial reports owns the majority of, of all of the big companies, whether it's AT&T or Verizon or whatever. You really are dealing with the government, but the government has definitely gone out of control because people aren't standing up, so it's also sleepy people. Right. I understand that. I mean, I the best I can do is give you that address. That, that's the best you Definitely can do. That's the it. best you can do and keep your job, but eventually people are going to say, you know, this job isn't worth it. And that's that's the purpose of my work. It, it may by, it may not be your time today, but you know, I hope that as people start realizing they can create real wealth. I mean, the telephone shouldn't be that big a deal. The telephone should just serve us as we're doing productive things. But it's become, in and of itself, one of the most productive industries. And the only way it can do that is by taking people's rights away. And you can also see our prisons are so filled because through this same deception, you have about $10,000 worth of credit coming in a day for, um, for nonviolent prisoners, for people who are never allowed to face their accuser any more than anybody can step forward in AT&T and I can face them with my complaint. Well, uh, you should definitely be able to hear some feedback back from that uh, address I gave you. I'll, I will be astonished if I get something in writing, but I hope so. You should, definitely. With, 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 uh, with a real signature. Okay. You should. Okay, thank you, Jenny. You're very welcome. Anything else I can assist you with at the moment? No, that's it, and I promise not to text and drive. Oh, good. I don't okay. ever do that either. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Thanks you for too. Thanks for t Okay, bye. Okie dokes. So here is evidence of the foreign occupier that's going to be regarding us as foreign Internet users. Now you're going, how can we be foreign Internet users? Well, in the same way, we're considered resident aliens by the IRS. It's a different terminology, but it's basically the same scam, and it's something that we have to consent to. Now this says 901 Grizzly Peak. And it says AT&T underground wireless cable, right? You have to call them before you dig. But remember, the entomology professor that used to live here didn't want to pay $500 per lot. And that means he would have paid for three lots. So he didn't want to pay $1,500. And that's why we still have these these cables here. So undoubtedly what's going to happen is AT&T is probably going to say, oh, you know what, if you consent to our jurisdiction, I keep forgetting when I go upside down, this thing shuts off. Anyway, AT&T is probably going to make a deal. If you consent to our jurisdiction, we'll pay to put these uh, wires underground. Now, my mom would have sprung for $500 because she was a law librarian. She had a pretty good job at the University of California. I think the entomology professor was just a little tight. But in any case, because he didn't want to do it, she didn't do it either. So that's why for a mere $2,000, these things did not get put underground. 
And I'm sure today this is going to have some very interesting implications when it comes to standing up for your rights. And you'll see in truth how much power you can have if you maintain your connection to the land. Remember, this is Grizzly Peak and Forest Lane. And again, that's the house in which I've lived since I was four years old. This is another angle. And what I'm going to be doing here is waiting for the bus. The other day, I missed an opportunity when one of these AT&T people were working on one of these on one of these boxes. This again is the fiber optics box, and this is what's being uh, set up all over that's going to be controlling us because each one of us is going to have an IP address and they're going to decide what we see and which groups we chat with and so on. And there's one over in that direction, but I don't want to go that far because I don't want to miss the bus. This may be the bus that's going to be going up and making a loop. Maybe I'll ask him. That bus driver indicated to me that he's going to be making the loop. So I have enough time to run over here. And, uh, oh, interestingly enough, this is Tilden Regional Park. And I find it interesting at the National Arts Club, there's the Tilden Room. So I wonder if that's going to be the same ones. Now, uh, here, as you can see, this is a busy intersection. Marin Street is a super straight street. It runs straight up into the hills, and it was designed this way to let fire trucks come up. And over here is where we're going to go. This, of course, was an empty lot when I was a kid, a little bit wild and unkempt. We're going to go here to see AT&T, this box. I thought I lost my opportunity to talk to real people, but it looks like they're real people here. Hey there! Are you AT&T people working on this? He was like, hey, how about, he's like, how about we put you guys in a hotel so we could um, Hello. You know, like, get more productivity and stuff? Hi. I'm just a community broadband activist, cool. and I'm wondering what you're doing here. What is Rethink possible? We're actively working on broadband. Uh-huh. Now, I have a POTS line. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to that? Um, you should be able to keep it. Keep the POTS line, but you see, you see all those wires up there. It's, it's not underground. What are you going to do? Oh, it's not. Huh. You know why? I've lived in the same house since I was four years old. So my mom's been there. For... <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Well, I, I, I have to have you probably call AT&T. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. I know they just they just brought some cable in to they they brought bringing fiber up to the. Are you recording me? Yeah. Because I'm recording you. Yeah. What's your ID number? Your employee ID number. I'll give you my name. I don't even know your name. My name. You don't need to know my name. Well, my name is Paula Gloria. I'm a public access producer in Manhattan. I come out every day on community affairs at 12 noon. And I kind of have a problem when AT&T employees don't give their name or even a, an ID number. Are you going to tell me who you are at all? Uh, what's the purpose? The purpose is disclosure. Well, I, I never authorized you to film me. Well, I don't authorize you to film me. Who do you work for? Should we both turn it off then? Or? I'm telling you my name. I'm telling you exactly what I do. Hey, well, we I have nothing work, to so hide. You have something to hide, clearly. If you have something to hide and you're told that you can't give your name, that means you're being used as a front for something illegal. And I'm really glad that I'm being recorded because I like to be recorded. I have nothing to hide. Can you give me your name? Well, my you're name is Philip Neely, and you probably should call my manager, who was... Uh, Keith Schneider. Okay. I can give you his number. Okay. Why was he not giving me his name and number? And why was he recording me and saying that well, he I didn't think, authorize me was, to record let me, him? Let me, let me address some of your questions. He was probably recording you so he could... For training wait. purposes, right? No, no. We're, That's what they usually say. We're strictly... For quality assurances We're, we're like strictly that. here just doing projects that, that AT&T sends us on.
We're not doing anything that... Did you know that AT&T is 67 percent owned by the government? At least Time Warner is on the East Coast. Well, there's a lot of things going on in the country right now that I am unaware of that I just hear in the news all the time. Do I look like a terrorist? No, you don't look like a terrorist. And you don't look like a terrorist either. No, you look fine like you're part of the community. Well, yeah, for 57 years. It's a beautiful community. You're living in that house. I love it. It's a little bit sleepy. People are a little bit unaware of their rights. It's really... Yeah, but you know, it's probably everywhere that they're... Unaware of their rights. I mean, we all have jobs. It's hard to kind of... Are those fiber optic lines or POTS lines? They must be fiber optics because I didn't grow up seeing these little... That's just copper. Little devices? That's copper. But it's not fiber optics? The fiber optics, that there's a... We have a... Right across the street and both streets in the corner, there is a... From the central office, they do have fiber coming out there. And uh, that's that's to bring out the U-verse that we, we try to supply to the community. Okay. Uh, without the fiber, we wouldn't be able to bring that that uh, the broadband that we do. And this basically is where we we um, connect to the rest of the neighborhood. My only problem family. with the technology, I love the technology, mm-hmm. is you have to go through a third-party distributor and you give up your rights. You consent to their jurisdiction. You know, and that means that your email can be watched because we're considered foreign internet users mm-hmm. and I resent being called a foreigner on a land that I grew mm-hmm. up on. I'm well, not the foreigner. Uh, you're, and you're, the technology you're should kind, serve you're kind me. Of speaking, you're kind of speaking to, to the choir right now. I bet I bet I am. You yeah. know why? Because I went through this at the Public Utilities Commission meeting in Kingston, New York, mm-hmm. where I just happened to stumble on the fact that Central Hudson was going to be sold to Fortis, to a foreign company, and if you look at their track record, they just devastate the communities that they go into. And people who've been long-standing um, uh, Central Hudson employees lose their jobs, mm-hmm. and you don't have the quality. So if you just give me the number, I'll take it, because I don't want to miss my bus. Okay, let me give you... I just, I just found that so distasteful that an AT&T employee said they didn't consent to me videotaping them. You know, you never used to hear that. It used to be the customer's king and so on. But I realize I'm not a customer either. Even being a customer, you give up your rights. I don't want to give you the wrong number, so... I know I can't give you his personal number, and so it's going to have to be. I'm almost sure this is the correct number. Do you have something right there? No, I'm going to record oh, it. It's 925 925 617 617 1256. 1256. And your name again? My name is Philip Neely. And are you in a union? Yes. More power to the union. Yes. God bless you, Philip. I just caught that guy saying that he's making a call because some lady was filming us. Of course, now he's going away. He wants privacy, and for me to go into that car, I need a search warrant. I wonder if I could get it. So here I am waiting for the bus. Well, my goodness, that was really productive. And you know what it was? It took kind of a, a nod and a wink from the bus driver to signal to me that he was going to be making the loop up there. So I knew I had a certain amount of time. To, uh, I was just going to photograph that AT&T uh, fiber optics box. You could see the older guy was much more cooperative. The younger guy is being trained, either consciously or unconsciously, to, uh, to alert the company that he's working for that there's somebody around who's really savvy to what's going on, and they're trained to videotape them and and for training purposes teach people how to deal with people like me who have cameras. Again, as far as the Second Amendment is concerned, Joe and I feel that the most important weapon we have is our camera. If people have something that they don't want to be seen and you show it to the public, chances are they're doing something that's violating the rights or harming the uh, 
the common the commonwealth all of this scary homeland security stuff and keeping big databases and everything it, it's just all about corporations picking your pockets and that's what the constitutional forefathers understood that if government is given a little power and not held in check it's just a matter of no time flat practically if people don't stand up for their rights and don't become the belligerent claimant that the people become subservient to the government and all the government there is there to do is to uh, protect your rights dominating the whole bus Excuse me, I'm a public access producer and I'm interested in your t-shirt. Your, your coat pink? And we will not be silent. Is that women in black? Well, I'm going, I'm women in black today. Oh, so that's what that is? wearing a black t-shirt. But that's what that means, we will not be silent? That's women in black? Originally, there was a young man who was not allowed on an airplane. That had, he had a T-shirt with Arabic writing on it, oh, and that uh, code pink then to support him. I, I mean, see. to protest. I see. I didn't know code pink was doing that. I thought no, they were it's doing. it's old. It's not new. My T-shirt's probably four or five years old. Oh, great. <laughs> well, nice to see it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like the pictures. <laughs> they were unhappy with KPFA because they weren't uh, discover, the, discussing the case of Judy Barry had something to do with Earth First. They were unhappy about that, but they had to rush off to catch their bus rather than being on Manhattan Neighborhood Network coming out at 12 noon on the Community Affairs, which means people don't think much about public access television. Now, there's Constitution Square, so you can bet a lot of shop owners' rights must have been violated in order to build this kind of a shopping mall complex, which the city of Berkeley used to be pretty careful not to let happen. A lot of businesses I know um, are around my mom's nursing home because they can't pay the higher rents. This is the heart of Berkeley, and look at how it's just been strip-malled. used to be quite cute. 
now, not, not so. They build a lot of stuff, but it's all monotonous and, and uh, you know, the kind of, I mean, even that's an older building. This stuff, wow, they must have taken down a lot of historical stuff to build this. And then they had the nerve to call it Constitution Square. This is kind of ominous. It says, right to pass by permis permission and subject to control of owner. Section 1008 Civil Code. Well, the big question is, who's the owner? I thought this was the public's right of way. So you can see they're starting to set things up legally that have to do with uh, the right to assemble freely so they can get around that. You have a right to assemble freely, but if you've got these little sneaky codes, then uh, your unlawful arrest will be regarded as okay because you'll have been rendered into a corporation and subject to things like civil codes. Civil codes do not supersede constitutional rights rights protected under the Bill of Rights. According to Raja, the forensic examiner, Wells Fargo is right up there with Deutsche Bank as one of the horrible banks that uh, have been robbing and raiding and looting the resources of the world. And that's actually the Wells Fargo building. Things didn't start getting so bad and so apparent until 2008. And that was when my husband, Joe Barton, was busted. I think probably they came in through the internet IP address and didn't realize the, the problem of getting a search warrant. Because even though you can come in and spy on people, you still need to have a search warrant in order to arrest them. Here's a Berkeley person enjoying the Berkeley weather. He might even be a professor. People just like to uh, hang out. And this is Constitution Square. There's the BART police. Bay Area Rapid Transit. It just happened. Okay, I'm waiting for the 18. It's going to be uh, 16 minutes. This is saying the 51 is 8 minutes. That's really nice if it's reliable, but if some of them come back to back. Yeah. Do you want to be on TV on public access? No, thank you. Okay. Let me go around you because I want to get okay, this. Watch your way. Okay. Now look at this uh, poster. It says, foreclosure, everything confusing can make. So they put up a confusing poster. And you better believe if you call that number, they'll probably just add to the confusion. And really, you know, yet another agency or way that people are going to be distracted from understanding the power that they have to right stay there. in their property regardless. You just have to fight for it because the banks can't Woo! produce the contracts. And this is Shattuck Avenue. And since I have 18 minutes, let me go over here and show you where we came from. Okay. Up here is Grizzly Peak, and that steep street is Marin. And that was right where, it's a 12, I just want to make sure it wasn't my book and my bus. This is Grizzly Peak and Marin. That's where my mom's house is. The other day when I was walking up through the paths, the paths are ones that cut through these roads. Number one. And let's see, spruce, uh, I would say around here is where my sister is and I was making my way up through the paths here. When I got the bus, that's where we saw the AT&T guy. Then we looped around Grizzly Peak and then came to Marin and that's where all those kids came on. And then we wove around down here and uh, let's see, yeah, Euclid came to the north of campus there. Then we went down that way, and then I showed you all that boring stuff. And here we are at the Berkeley BART around Constitution Square. I'm going to be going around this way to where my mom's nursing home is. So here she is down on the flatland. You can see by the grid it's more flat. And you can see the way that the, the, they squiggle the streets, that that's hilly. miss this bus because it wasn't 16 minutes it was right there so that lady was right that they came back to back 
There's a mechanics bank. I remember my old landlord when I had Mr. Wickers used to use mechanics bank. And I think that reflects the trust that people have in the blue collar worker, the person who's actually doing something. What as opposed you need to, to know is that these buses. Can, I, can you be on this? No. no. You need to know that these buses. Here we are at Elmwood Nursing, and I'm doing some editing here. And here's my brother, hey, George. <laughs> Means New Year's. Oh yeah. Uh, who told you? Um, another Ethiopian. Which her husband's here. Um, I can't remember her name either. There's a few Ethiopians. Yeah, they they are a lot there. Yeah. Right, I talk to you later. Okay, okay thanks. Thank you. Was Meshkar. where Ariana goes to school at St. Mary's. It's nice to smell the newspaper smell, familiar smells. Some basics of the hundred-year-old realtor code of ethics. Oh. This is no ethics. <laughs> well, yeah. It's the same thing as the lawyer's code of ethics. Fixed it. It's done. So we're on the corner of. Berkeley Bowl behind us. Would you like some watermelon, Jen? I think she might, because she gets she's kind of thirsty. Some watermelon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go get it. Good, I haven't seen you out in a long time. <laughs>
when you wrote the story about the grasshopper with Paula. That's the little grasshopper. With his, so this is New York City here, and there are flowers. And there's a little grasshopper like Paula hopping around. <laughs> This is where uh, Machu Picchu, where Bob and I went. The, the, the Mayans in Peru. So the Mayans built this 2,000 years ago when the Greeks were building the Parthenon. And then this is Cusco over here. This is the church because when the Mayans were pushed out, the Spanish conquistadors built the Catholic churches. But this is the first buildings. And civilizations build on each other. They're usually pretty violent, but this was neat because it was discovered by a professor from Yale. He was just walking through the mountains in Peru, and some native said he should go see these ruins, and, and now it's a, a national, a world treasure. Of the, very colorful, the Peruvian people, what they wear, and Of course, they're selling you everything in the, in the town. They don't show all the vendors trying to sell you stuff to make a living.
seeds and then you can spit them out just on the hair, it's okay. and I'll put this back or I'll just come back. I don't know what you want. You want to go out in the sun a little bit? George can wheel you out in the sun. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take this back to the room because I finished. Okay, I think it's blood.
keep that one. That's for another guy. Great butt, George. <laughs> I just saw Bette Midler and uh, Danny DeVito, ruthless people. <laughs> Maybe more in the kind of combination shade and sun over there, back there by the watermelon. Smoking section. Oh, well, we'll wait. No smokers show up. Sadie's geranium. geranium. You carry the nice scissors. They're small. Bob has the little knife. your skin if she starts getting goosebumps we'll put her in the sun. Mm. It's too cold. Yeah. Just raise your flower if it's too cold. <laughs> Sadie flower. Or how old Sadie was. Good in her Do you remember how old Sadie was? She rode horses. <laughs> really? She's a horsewoman. I didn't know that. Do you remember her? Or did you know? A little bit. She had nice little knickknacks. <laughs> and there was a nice apricot tree. Yeah. Well, there's one by our apartment, amazingly enough. And it goes over the street, so I pulled the RV up the side and I can get high and mm -hmm. kind of grab them. DJ thinks I shouldn't steal them. Are they good? I think they fall into the street anyway. Yeah, it's like, remember when Helen had all those 
and her tree was just busting with it, and we had to prop up the branches, and you put a little sign there saying, what are people doing? Don't eat them. Yeah. Just be careful of the branches. Okay, I knew that I remembered something. This must have been it. Proposed project, project information, 2100 and MKLA Junior Way. Now, granted, it's sort of a good sympathy to have somebody who is a leader of the civil rights movement, but Grove Street is now, you know, replaced with MLK JR. It's just so, so cold and corporate and hard. And then, of And then, of course, the zip code here, that's a military jurisdiction. We don't have things in the county. CA, again, is, is uh, that overlay of uh, the, the municipal corporations instead of the state of California and so on, all spelled out. Proposed upgrade of data center room and install of new HVAC on rooftop. So I don't know what an HVAC is, but I'm sure somebody out there knows. And here is the applicant, the city of Berkeley. And I'm sure you're going to find that the city of Berkeley is just a private corporation, and it's all about money, and you see it over all the buildings. No smoking, and it's a commercial, commercial zone. And for more information, you go to a website, and the applicant has a physical address but you learn about it on the internet. And again, look at how shaky the internet is for, um, for making sure rights are upheld. They do these electronic signatures, and like when your password changes and they'll say our fraud department has detected somebody was hacking and then they give you a new, a new address. I remember going through this with Verizon, finding out that somebody had gone into my Fios account at Rabbit Hole Central in Gramercy Park and they even said it had a name. It was called uh, Unmet Needs. So some entity called Unmet Needs was just sucking off my bandwidth. And Verizon sent me an entire new router. And I was pretty naive at the time, but I'm sure the new router probably had sent it sensitive ways for me to be spied on. But again, if you're not violating anyone's rights, just spy back at them. And just, you know, like, you know, this is the protocol. You have to make an announcement in the community of what you're doing, and then you go ahead. So, you know, you have all rights to look back at what they're doing. Don't be worried about them spying on you. Make sure that they're doing their job and protecting your rights. And if they're not, yell and holler and scream and bitch and complain and be the belligerent claimant. Because uh, founding fathers understood that once you had a vast entity set up that's set up to protect your rights uh, there's there's a lot of temptation to steal and so right now what's happening is huge resources or amounts of money or credit or whatever is being shipped offshore but the actual wealth itself is the land and the people hi there and it's the land and the people that actually produce these. Oh, now we have a nicer shot of the old city hall. Hi. Isn't this a nice little place? And a couple blocks away, it's really pretty, too. Now you're getting a feeling of old Berkeley. 
and, it, and so close to all of that corporate stuff, despite the politeness of the policeman on the motorcycle. Look at how he was all geared up. I remember how shocked I was at UC Santa Cruz when there was a protest about, I don't know, some train or road or something coming through and they didn't want it. And I went down there to protect my cameras and I was one of the first people arrested. And it was just so scary, the riot gear that they were in. That must have been about 1970, um, 71 or so. And now policemen are more paramilitary. It's not somebody that's, that's the neighborhood person that's making sure that the peace, the peace in the community is, is kept. And they get you for disturbing the peace. I always think of Viney Burroughs now. She loves the flowers of Berkeley. This is, this is wealth. These are the natural resources of this land. It's a creative land. Now we're coming to Alston Way, and then I'll take a left and go to the library and pick up my computer where a nice person kept it because the bandwidth was so slow. It was going to take two and a half hours to upload. I went to the Berkeley Media Center and found out I wasn't going to get access. And now upon finding out that I didn't want to talk to anybody, but I wanted to write something and I needed to know the name of who to write to, because my right to publicity was being violated if I can't get access to the airwaves, the bandwidth. A lot, a lot of police around here. You have three messages. Message one. Hey, Paula, uh, Terry McGregor calling from Elmwood. Hey, I'm just getting back to you and uh, wondered if we could coordinate a time. I'm at Elmwood right now and that. Uh, but uh, why don't we coordinate a time? I might have some time tomorrow. Why don't you call me? My cell number is 510-677-8220. Uh, so we can touch base, and I have uh, I have copies of the letters, and so we can go over those uh, in detail. I'll talk to you later. Hope things Wednesday, 6.39 p.m. This is just for Paula. This is Jeff at Berkeley Community Media. I am uh, been asked to call you to tell you that uh, I did convert your video files for you, and I'm turning them in to air on our station. Uh, give me a call if you have any questions. 510-848-2288. And again, I'm Jeff. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.